booktube welcome back to my channel in january i read 10 books these are nine of them i already returned one of them to the library after i give you my january recap we're gonna play a game called book links where i'm gonna attempt to link all the books that i have read with another book that i have read kind of like a segue so each book has to have something in common with the book I read before it and the book I read after it. And I'm just going to give you a quick synopsis of what I thought of these books, but I've done a little closer book into each one and so I'll go ahead and link those videos where if you want to hear a little bit more about the books you can go and check those out. My first read of 2018 was Eleanor Oliphant is Completely Fine by Gail Honeyman. This was a novel about a young woman who endured a traumatic event when she was just a child. And so she spent most of her life cloistered away from close relationships. So she's kind of a social misfit. And now that she's decided to start dating, it is a pretty funny look at how she transforms herself and what her relationships are like. Next, I read Hunger by Roxane Gay, which I got from the library, and so I've already returned that one. This is a memoir about Roxane Gay's body. She also endured a traumatic event when she was just 12 years old. She was gang raped, and she kept it a secret. She didn't want to tell anyone about it, so she wanted to create this ever-increasing wall between her and the rest of the world. So she overate because she wanted to make herself unappealing, but while she overate, she also made her body into a prison. And so this memoir is titled Hunger because she spent so much of her life craving the experiences that she couldn't get because of things that she had done because of things that had been done to her. It is a memoir of her body, but it's a story that many of us can probably relate to. Next, I read You Don't Look Adopted by Anne Heffron. Anne Heffron was given up for adoption when she was just 10 weeks old. And she spent most of her life trying to understand why. Why her mother didn't love her enough to keep her. While she lucked out in the adoption process in that she actually looks like her birth parents, which is why the book is titled this way, she spent her life bearing the scar of adoption, trying to find her birth parents and being rejected by them and the scars just deepening. And so this is a stunning, gripping look at what adoption really means to the person who is adopted, but also for the people around them. Those first three books were by women, so then I had to read three books by men. <laughs> My first was Turtles All the Way Down by John Green, and this is his latest young adult fiction. It is about a 16-year-old girl named Aza who has obsessive compulsive disorder. She keeps thinking about the things that are coming into her body and how the germs could kill her. There's mention of her having lost her father, and so I wonder if that's where the compulsion came from. But the story is about Aza and her friendship with Daisy and their relationship with a boy named Davis, who they've known since they were much younger, but whose father has now gone missing and they're trying to get the reward for figuring out what happened to him. This is young adult fiction and not necessarily my preferred genre, but this, I think, is as good as YA gets. <laughs> Next, I read The White Tiger by Aravind Adiga. This is about a successful businessman in Delhi, India, who is relating the story of how he overcame poverty to become a successful businessman. He writes a series of letters to the Chinese premier who's about to visit his country and tries to explain and justify his criminal acts and explains that this is how one becomes an entrepreneur. So in the process of relating his experiences, he introduces us to the culture and the corruption that he says is to be expected in Delhi, India. Next, I read Remains of the Day by Kazuo Ishiguro, which is set in the mid-1900s in England. The main character is Stevens, and he's a butler to a man named Lord Darlington for most of his career. But when his boss dies, he gets a new American employer, and he's forced to acknowledge that some of the decisions that happened around him weren't necessarily for the greater good, and that his boss may have had a hand in some of the events that led up to the war. Next, I read Sing Unburied Sing by Jasmine Ward. I read this one for the Run Right Reads Book Club. This one is about Jojo, who we meet him on his 13th birthday. He's about to become a man. And it's about the lessons that he's been learning about manhood and about life from his mixed race family. His mother is African American, his father is white. And the relationship that his mother and his father's family have with each other, their interaction with drugs. There's a supernatural element to this book as we find out that Jojo's mother and later Jojo himself are able to see and communicate with ghosts. 
people from their past or from the past of the people that they love who have come back to either get or give information and to try to help change the present. Next, I read Disgrace by J.M. Kotsi. This one is set in post-apartheid South Africa and has to do with the relationships that blacks and whites have after segregation was abolished. It's also about the decisions that we make and how the sins of the father can be passed on to the children. In this story, we have a man who objectifies women but gets upset when the same thing is done to his daughter. Next, I read Chemistry by Wiki Wang. This is about a Chinese-American young woman. She's a PhD chemistry student, and she looks to the women who have come before her in science and in her family, for examples. And so when her boyfriend proposes marriage, she's not able to accept because she's dealing with the weight of what women in science and the women in her family have had to endure as a result of getting married. And finally, I read The Heart of Henry Quantum by Pepper Harding. This is a stream of consciousness novel told from three different perspectives. We get the perspective of Henry, his wife Margaret, and his ex-girlfriend Daisy, and tries to justify their infidelity by pitting each character against each other, but also exploring the other relationships in their life. So that's it. Those are the ten. Well, these are nine. <laughs> these are the books that I read in January. Two of them were nonfiction. Eight of them were fiction. I read about 2,500 pages. So now you've heard the synopsis. You know what each book is about. Now we're going to play the game that I'm calling Book Links. I'm going to try to link each book with the book before it and the book after it. And then to create a perfect segue chain to link book number 10 with book number 1. Let's see if we can do it. <laughs> so here we go. Eleanor Oliphant is Completely Fine is about a girl who endured a childhood trauma and she still bears the physical and emotional scars as an adult. Hunger by Roxane Gay is also about a girl who endured a childhood trauma and as an adult, she's still dealing with the physical and emotional scars. In Hunger, Roxane Gay talks about some deeply personal actions that she used to drive a wedge between her and her parents. Anne Heffron's memoir, she also talks about driving a wedge between her and her adoptive mother because she constantly felt like she was being disloyal to her birth mother by having a relationship with her adopted mom. In You Don't Look Adopted, there's a scene where Anne Heffron drives a friend away because of her obsession with her adoption. And the same thing happens in Turtles All the Way Down. Daisy and Aza's relationship suffers because Daisy calls Aza out. She can't look away from her obsession long enough to read one of Daisy's fanfiction stories. One of the subplots in this book is about Davis rejecting his father's decisions and trying to live his own life. Same with this book. Balram grows up seeing his father work as a servant and he's adamant that he will not have the life that his father did. However, while Balram sees his father working as a servant, Stevens also sees his father working as a servant. However, Stevens is actually proud of the fact that his father served as a dignified butler, and here he is carrying on the family tradition and also serving as a dignified butler. Also in this one, Stevens comes to his epiphany while in the process of a road trip going to see someone from his past. In Sing Unburied Sing, Jojo is also on a road trip with his mother, his sister, and his mother's friend. They're going to see someone from their past. His father is about to come out of jail, and a big part of the story happens on this road trip. Sing Unburied Sing and Disgrace both have racial conflicts between whites and blacks. This one happens in the south of the United States, in Mississippi. This one happens in the Cape Town region of South Africa, and happens in the Reconstruction period after apartheid has ended. And then this one features a dog. There's even a dog on the cover. And this one also features a dog. Both of these have female characters with dogs. And the dogs play a pretty important role in the story. But more than that, chemistry is a stream of consciousness narrative where the main character explores scientific concepts and how they relate to life. And the same thing happens in The Heart of Henry Quantum. And here he explains how the principle behind quantum mechanics is how observing an object changes it. And so in here, you observing Henry Quantum's life, you as the reader kind of become a catalyst in how he makes his decisions. But the challenge now is to see whether we can link Henry Quantum back to Eleanor Oliphant. In both of these books, the main character works in an office. And a pretty significant scene happens inside the office and another pretty significant scene happens just outside the office when they leave for a break. And that's it. 
those are book links. <laughs> That's the first in a new series that I'm starting called book links. Maybe next time I'll do it as a separate video, but this time I just want to incorporate it here and you tell me whether or not you want to see more of this. So thanks for watching this video. Leave me a comment down below. Let me know if you've read any of these books and if you want to chat about them. And until next time, happy reading. Bye.